On this episode of RC Kicks, we continue with the Evo 4 Fix and Flip project. And was this part of the plan? <sighs> uh, yeah, about that. Oh, really? Ah, you see, it was a reallocation of resources to hopefully produce a positive result at the end project. Well, in that case, fantastic. This episode was not sponsored by Fairfax and Favour, unfortunately. Maybe it's not a good time to mention this then. Hi and welcome to Aussie Kicks. <laughs> on today's show we're back working on the Fix and Flip Evo 4 project. Now how far have we got? Well there's a lot to cover of the progress of that. Basically we were going to take a car, try and repair it, bring it back up to Shelf Queen and then sell it on for a profit. If you haven't seen the first video for that I'll put a link up here, go check that up because if you haven't seen that this is going to make no sense whatsoever. So how far have we got with the project since the last video? Well Hold on, hold on. It looks a bit bad, I know, but it's actually good. What have we got to? Well, the load of parts have come in and there's loads of other bits to come. We've got lots to cover. So we'll go over all the current bits and pieces, what I've done in the background, and then uh, where the project went a bit sideways, we'll cover that as well. Also, um, no professional actors were used in the making of this video. So if you would like to see some more professional actors on actresses on this show, go over to the Patreon and sponsor so we can employ people who can act better than us. Anyway, right, let's carry on with this. So how far have we got? Well, the body has been giving me a bit of a problem. You see believe it or not out of all the evos this is an evo 4 does anybody make an evo 4 body nope nope you cannot get a reproduction evo 4 body don't ask me why i have no idea at all but that's just my luck isn't it really so uh what did i do well the plan was that i was going to get a body that was close as possible and that's exactly what i've done so i've ordered one from lnl models and that's what i've got here now, this is an EVO 3 body. What does that mean? Well, it's not exactly the same as the EVO 4, but it's only the difference of the original car was from basically the bonnet back, it's the same. Uh, lights are slightly different, and then the front valance bumper and things like that were changed on the original car. So they're almost identical apart from the front bumper and the bonnet is where it really stands out the most. But in the rally terms, the decals were exactly the same because obviously the, the, the real rally car was just migrated from an Evo 3 to an Evo 4. So they don't look that different. So that's the best I can come up with. So progress has been made and hence that's why it's now in a box because everything has been fully stripped down. Everything has been cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and I am waiting to peroxide the uh, rims as well. So that's gonna happen when the sun comes out in the UK again. Fortunately, the weather's gone from beautiful to pretty naff again but I plan to bleach the wheels out, that's coming. Also, I've managed to source some additional parts for this uh, kit. Now, one thing that I've learned, and which I really enjoy when you get into a new chassis, is you learn as you're trying to restore it, all the different versions and the different things that Tamiya did with them. Now, the biggest one for this chassis is that it's the gray. And it's the uh, F, which means the motor sits over the front axle, because that means you have to have different chassis depending on where the actual motor was placed. There's different variants of this type of kit. So after stripping all the car down and cleaning absolutely everything, there's, there's pluses and there's minuses. And the pluses are this. Uh, I have everything. Everything was in lovely condition. Um, I've got a new motor to put in it. All the electronics worked as we found out in the last video. They all cleaned up really well. All the running gear, all the gears are in lovely condition. It fully ball raced, so they all got cleaned and came up lovely. There was a few small problems. One that I knew about is when I'm trying to do a restoration to a shelf queen, I want to try and get rid of any road rash I can. So replacing the bits underneath that have got any damage on them, it just takes a restoration to the next level. When you can look at a beautiful body, you open the body, the chassis is all lovely and clean and you flip it over and it's very clean underneath. That is really difficult to do. Because, like I said, these are all grey parts, and grey parts are very, 
very difficult. Black parts seem to be a lot easier to get hold of, and you can take some black parts and swap them over, and then you're good to go. But I'm trying to restore this to a higher quality kit, so I had the problem of chasing down parts. But luckily, I have someone in France who is an expert on these. He's got tons of parts. I, I made a list for him of all the parts I'd like to re uh, replace, and he came back with all the parts not brand new on trees, but in a lot better condition than the ones I've got. So we did a deal and they're flying over now. So I was really chuffed about that. From a budget point of view, it does start to push the budget a little bit. I did manage to find one tree on eBay that I got for 15 pound. So that was brilliant. That was brand new. So I've got quite a few new pieces coming. And this is where it starts to get a little bit stupid because I've basically got front one with the motor, back bulkhead, new chassis, new front under uh, belly pan, and then I've got a few other bits like the skid plate on the back. He's got a much better condition one than, than me. The rear guard, again, takes a bit of road rash, so he's got a better one than me. So I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to replace quite a lot of the chassis. This old broom has had 17 new heads and 14 new handles in its time. <laughs> Can it be the same bloody broom? We'll get there. Anyway, the, the main reason why, even though these parts aren't too bad, is one thing that when I found was this chassis was actually built really well. The attention to detail was there. But, and this is a good lesson for everybody who's building cars, when you put your screws in, don't over tighten them. The, the screws are kept in place by the friction between the screw and the plastic. It's not how much pressure you push on them, because if you go too deep, what happens, which is exactly what happened to this kit and the Falcon that I had before, is it uh, down the line, it blows all the joints so these parts are in lovely condition with no damage but when you start to look at where all the parts are screwed in i've got a blown one there i've got a blown one there i've got another uh, blown one here and one over there so this part has cracks in it now i could just put it back together again like it was before and not many people are going to notice but obviously trying to restore this to as good as i can so the parts i'm getting are original parts but they haven't had that damage to them which means i still have to be very careful when i put it back together again because i can get a replacement part put the screw in too much and it will split instantly being that they're vintage now we move on to where it uh, goes sideways fast and uh, yes because that's the idiot that I am and that's where <laughs> this comes in. Mm. Now <laughs> if <laughs> you might know about these you might not but this is a very strange one that Tamiya did and it is a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo uh, 4 and this is on a DF-03RA chassis. So this is quite a rare one. Now, the reason I've got this is completely because of this, but uh, it doesn't really make much sense. And that's, for me, that sounds about right. So in a minute, we're gonna unbox this and take a look at it. But a lot of you will probably know it's a DF-03. You're like, that's a buggy chassis. Yes, believe it or not, they did this version in this red box and there was another one in green where they've actually taken a buggy chassis and kind of turned it into a road rally car. And then it's actually got the Evo 4 body on it. Right, so let's take a better look at this kit. So what's so special about it? Well, the first thing you can notice, it's in a totally red box, which is very strange. Now I did, did a bit of digging on this one. This is kit 92203, and it was released on the 15th of July, 2009, making this just over 12 years old now. Now this is a limited sale series that they did. That's why there's no real livery on the box or anything. You've just basically got a little sticker at each, uh, each end. This is a pretty rare kit, so I was kind of lucky to get it. So a massive thanks to Tomli RC for selling it to me and for feeding my addiction. Right, let's open it up and take a look and see what you get for your money. So let's open it up and take a look. So obviously, like I said before, you get that insanely rare body. So I'm looking forward to getting this painted up. In this kit, it seems to have a body from another buggy for some reason. Now I don't know if this actually, 
It says Tamiya 2006 on it and it says 58370. So I need to look up and see what body that's from. Then we've got brand new lovely wheels. I hope to get the uh, uh, fix and flip to the same sort of standard again with a little bit of peroxide and some good cleaning. So there we go. Then we've got the lovely big spoiler. It's just funny to see all these parts in lovely condition after looking at them on the body that I've got. Uh, so there we go. That's the rear spoiler. Then we've got the tires. Nothing super special about those. Uh, what else have we got? Then we have some rear spoiler. So there's actually on this tree, there's some rear spoiler, like a wing, rear wing parts. And then we've got uh, some gearbox and some uh, body stays. What else have we got here? We've got another huge bag, which has got in some bumper sections. And uh, we'll cut to a montage in a bit and take a good look. Then we've got another tree where the main gearbox goes. And the battery door. Then we've got the main chassis. Then we get all the other parts. It's got a motor. Apparently this comes fully ball raced. So that's pretty cool. So it's quite, it's just a very oddball one for them to do really. Metal uh, motor mount. It has actually got a couple of pinion choices in it as well. Ball diff and shims, which is good to see. And a standard motor. Right, let's just cut to a montage and you can have a better look at all this kit. It's, yeah, it's a bit of an oddball one, I must admit. And we'll be right back. So there you go, that's just a quick look at the, uh, yeah, what can I say? The deviation that happened with the Fix and Flip project, showing you that I am a complete idiot and I end up in this position. But the plan is this, I think that I'll finish the Fix and Flip as soon as the parts come from France. There'll be a new video where we'll do all the build up of the chassis again, and then we'll paint up the Evo Mark III, get that project done, and hopefully that will go off to a new home not a loss with a bit of luck but we'll have to wait and see then uh, in the background as well is the Mercedes-Benz 190e that I'm doing so that will come out and then as soon as that's finished and that's released we're gonna do a bit of driving and then um, <laughs> then we'll turn our attentions to this beautiful rare kit we'll build this up on the show and then this one will go into my collection so if you've been badgering me wanting to have more rally and road cars on the show well this whole month is basically dedicated to that just for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.